Modular arithmetic is an interesting twist over normal arithmetic, which is what? It is operations over the natural numbers. One, two, three, etc. Unbounded, up to infinity. That's what we are working on. And any two numbers here in this set, we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply, we can divide, we can set a power relationship. It's all nice and good, except that this infinity is a little bit bothersome. It doesn't end. We cannot count it. So the natural numbers is uh, an open-ended set and we would feel a little bit better if we do our operation and our work over something that is being enclosed that has a limited count and that's where modular arithmetic comes in so we have the uh, the list of numbers from 1 to infinity and we want to replace them with a limited set of numbers let's say n number and to do this we need or we would like to find a way to do what mathematicians call mapping 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 is a very uh, uh, common operation in which we take a number here and we map it, we make it corresponding to a number in this closed set. Any number here will have a matching number here so that there will be no numbers on this infinity list that don't have a match here. By so doing, we map the entire infinity set, which gives us a little bit of a psychological trouble because it's infinite, it's uncountable, and we replace it with a set which is finite. Now the number n is our choice. It can be small, two, three, it can be a billion, a billion, billion. We decide. But even if it's one gazillion, this set contains only one gazillion elements, not one gazillion and one, which is not true over this. So modular arithmetic constitutes or is based on mapping the infinity into a finite set. And here is how we do it. We take this list or this uh, uh, rope that represents the finite set, set and we make a circle out of it. So we take this length and make a circle out of it. And then we build a cylinder with this circumference. Having done that, we take the uh, long list here and we attach it here to the cylinder. And then we start rotating the cylinder. Rotating it this way. What happens then? We have the uh, long infinity here. Rope is slowly disappearing here. Why? Because it wraps itself around and around and around this cylinder. Until what? Until it comes to an end. No matter how long this rope is, 
if we keep rotating it, eventually it stops somewhere at this point or at this point. But this circle here that we have is really this. So whatever point it stops, it really is one of the points here. And this way we are able to map a rope as long as we want on a point that is somewhere on this list. Again, because no matter how long the rope here is, if we assume that it has uh, zero width, uh, when it keeps rotating, it eventually ends at a point that is somewhere along the circumference, which is somewhere along this line. So next we can simply build a table. A table that will map numbers on the long L rope to a number on the short N rope, if you want. And this table will say that every length of L has a matching number, but this matching number will be no larger than N, because this rope here, this uh, set of numbers represented by the rope, cannot be larger than N. So, we have a complete table that says any number here has a matching number on this list and the table can be written and put aside. Now we can simply define modular arithmetic by saying all the numbers that represent uh, some number between 0 and n minus 1, which is better than use the number 1 to n, because it would like 0 to be part of the, of the set. So we have 0, and we stop it at n minus 1, so altogether we have n numbers. We take every two numbers here on this list, and we say, let's borrow from regular arithmetic the definition of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, it's not written here, and setting a power. Now, if n, let's say, is 100, and we want uh, to say how much is 10 plus 12, we say, oh, it's 22, nice. But what if we want to do 90 plus 70 and we get here 160 but oops we cannot have 160 because we can only have numbers from 0 to 99. So now we have to have a rule. What to do if we carry out one of those activities one of those operations, and the result exceeds the list out of n. So the rule will be very simple. If we do any of these operations, and the result comes out of this restricted list, we go back to this table, look it up, and find the matching number on this list, and that will be the result. And with this rule, we have defined a complete arithmetic. All the operations are borrowed from regular arithmetic if the result comes out of the list 0 to n minus 1, we put it back into the list using the table. That's it modular arithmetic defined. Thank you for watching. It was my pleasure.